Hi everybody, it's me, Beth Maitland, at the Drama Queen Bee Quilt Studio. And um, I'm back with vlog number 14. And we're gonna talk today about just sort of um, everyday happenings in the studio. Um, what I do to prepare and uh, what's on the rack, what I'm working on today, and what uh, happens just on a regular average day without a lot of deadlines here in the quilt studio. Um, I also have visitors that run in and out every now and then, which I'll show you. Um, there's a couple of pets that I want to introduce you to in this vlog because so many people have kindly asked about them. So uh, in the morning when it's coffee time, I um, have trouble sometimes getting motivated if there's no deadline. And here's why. This is why I can't get any quilting done. And this is why I'm always late with my blog posts, because I just can't stop petting this brushy brush boy. And you go boy a boo. Okay. Right. Look at the camera so everyone can see your pretty face. Look at this pretty boy. He's the boy that sleeps on top of all the fresh quilts. He's featured in my quilt book. In the final pages, sleeping on top of brand new projects. <laughs> Good boy, Abu. And then when I get downstairs, <laughs> I finally get ready to start my day. Um, I uh, roll up the big door so I get a lot of sunshine and fresh air. Um, I've joked before calling it plain air quilting. Um, I am in a very um, well finished and uh, well protected studio, but I love to have the big door rolled up so that I can get plenty of air and plenty of sunshine and right out uh, the, the view out the big door is my horses across um, an expanse off in their pasture so I can watch the horses come and go and, and uh, watch the dogs playing outside. And it's um, a lovely uh, experience for me, a, a, the perfect situation in regard to um, being able to do all the things I love sort of all at one time uh, and sort of, you know, keep an eye out on um, mischievous puppies and the like. Um, so anyway, uh, this um, is one of my little visitors. Buster, are you a good boy? Are you a really good boy? Good boy. And his puppy big sister. Maggie, are you a good girl? Maggie. What do you usually do in the quilting studio? Yes, you sit down like a good girl and then you lie down right where I work. What a good girl. Buster's still a good boy. So as you can see, there's a lot of what the English call hoovering around here. Because um, when Aggie or Rango or Buster are asleep underfoot, it's not unlikely that they will leave behind bark from my planters where they've been napping in the sun, or I have pecan trees, so they'll bring in nuts and chew them up into little pieces on the carpet under my quilter. So if I'm, the middle, if I'm in the middle of a long arm project, I have to always be mindful of who and what is underfoot. So um, I just finished, oh wait, is she here? Come here, Becky, come and say hello. Come and say hello really quick. Oh, look at that face. Mwah. I'll turn it. She's not. Oh, you can barely see her. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I just took a customer quilt off the rack.
um, a friend of mine who I have worked for doing long arm quilting for many years, who's a student of um, uh, in the area that I used to live in for 25 years. She was one of the quilting students of a nearby quilting school. And um, I did several of the students. Um, I did the long arming for several of those ladies. And she continues to send me her projects to do for her. This is a kit she made. And this is the um, edge to edge quilting we decided on. Um, sort of open weave. She wanted it sort of um, curvy to go with the angular assembly in the piecing. And um, so that got sent off and um, we'll insert that here. And then personally, I just finished um, what's called a tumbling charms or a tumbling squares quilt. I had, I found some, I'm in a shabby chic kind of mood and I found some very, it's spring, you know, and I found some very romantic fabrics I wanted to use up and, um, and uh, sort of clear out as this whole past year has been a lot of stash busting. So I made this quilt um, out of just, you know, pieces I had in my stash and did some lovely sort of sashing and um, feathering in the borders and then a pretty all over uh, center that was the inspiration for the customer quilt that you saw. She saw me post that and she wanted that that's how she found the, the, what she wanted for her edge to edge for the customer quilt in blue that you just saw. So um, this this is how things happen. I The inspiration comes from one thing or another. Somebody sees something on uh, Instagram or my Facebook page for Drama Queen Bee Quilts and uh, makes a comment about it or... Uh, sort of sets that aside and saves the photo of it to their desktop and then when they have their quilt finished they send it to me uh, for samples and that's a really good for you quilters out there um, that's a very good policy for keeping your long armor um, uh, satisfying your every quilting dream if you have photos that you come across on Pinterest or Instagram or any of your online searches or if you see something that you love snap a picture with your phone and put that in a folder on your desktop of your computer or um, somewhere set aside with your quilting designs so that when you make your quilt you can send them exactly the kind of design that you want um, that and that tends to make everything a lot easier um, for your long armor who is busy trying to make you know decide what you intended when she sees your beautiful quilt here's an example of a tumbling mm -hmm. squares uh, made out of charm packs. So those are five inch squares and lined on two sides with two and a half inch jelly roll strips. And then here's the one that we're working on. This is cut from yardage. And I just finished, finished this uh, yesterday. And this is cut from yardage. These are six inch squares with three inch strips on two sides. And you only make one square and it's just the orientation about putting it all together that makes these tumble and uh, then I did a little bit it's going to be sort of a green feeling kind of quilt with a little pink accent so let's go take a look at that block. So we're back at the machine and that um, the, the tumbling squares, I, I told you the wrong thing in the video clip uh, just ahead. I told you that they were three inches around the six inch block. I'm mistaken, they were four inches. So what I had was I started with just a six inch square of yardage in a real, again, I'm clearing out this beautiful shabby chic sort of romantic fa uh, fabric in my stash, making up a few quilts that may be gifts. And I may have a May, um, I'm thinking about having a May quilt sale, a studio sale. Um, and, and now that I've made, used a lot of scraps and used a lot of stash uh, during the last year, I've, I've compiled a lot of big projects and little projects. And I'm thinking I might uh, photograph them and maybe put them up on my Facebook page or here, uh, do a little slideshow for you. And then I'll maybe sell them uh, to clear out some space in my studio. Uh, some of them are gifts, but a lot of them I think are, are were projects to either make tutorials or to um, learn a technique for myself or to use up some some lovely scraps or stash fabric that I found over the COVID uh, sort of quarantining time when I couldn't go shopping. 
So, uh, so you take, a, a, this is just out of yardage and edge to edge. I cut, I love things that go fast. I want to get to the long arming. So in my construction, I usually don't do fussy, small piecing. I usually don't do complicated piecework, um, for quilts that I compose myself. I'm happy to long arm quilt for others who love to piece. And I respect that, but, um, I am at a t time in my life with, uh, schedule challenges when I have to commute, uh, three and a half hours to and from work. And I'm there for a couple of days during the week or sometimes more. I, when I'm here in my studio, I want that time to go as smoothly, efficiently, and quickly as possible. So I can, so I can be doing the work that I love. So Edge to edge, I found this lovely pink fabric and I laid it out on my cutting mat and I cut a six inch strip, edge to edge, a long strip like this. Um, and then I took cut out of a beautiful shot cotton I found that is a, sort of this mossy green with turquoise. I don't know if you can see the color of the shot on the weft and the the warp are different colors, which gives it a really pretty sheen in the sun and changes the, the color of it sort of depending on whether it's up or down in orientation to the weave. Anyway, cut four inch width of fabric of that pretty shot cotton. Again, a piece that went, here's the fold from edge to edge, here's the salvage. So the first one was six inches of the pink. The second one of the shot cotton was four inches. And then I sewed both strips together, edge to edge, all the way down one cut edge and just sewed a big old long strip of these. Then I took it to the ironing board and pressed it. Then I took it to the cutting mat and subcut. I laid that whole long strip set out and I cut six inch chunks that looked like this. So there was a whole strand of green, a whole strand of pink, and I sub cut, chink, 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 and I made a whole pile of these. And then I took another set of strips, also in four inch of the shot cotton, and I laid them all and chain stitched, chain pieced all the way down that piece. So let's pretend this is shot cotton. I laid this down on my, on my uh, sewing machine and I started sewing them like this. Right sides together, down one side, down here. And when I got to the bottom, I put another one right there and I kept sewing right sides together all the way down until I was out of space. And then I even, because I'm a crazy scrappy person and I love building all of my improvisational blocks we've talked about before, I <laughs> did a whole bunch of, um, taking the extra little space between the salvage edge and the bottom. And I just threw a bunch of all kinds of weird little piecing on that I'll chop up into bits and use for um, improvisational piecing later on. So um, then I ended up with pieces that looked like this. I went back and pressed and then I subcut again. And look what we ended up with. I cut in between each one of these and I ended up with all of our blocks that we needed. And so then I assembled them. Um, very easy to find Falling Charms um, tutorials online on YouTube. Uh, I recommend the one from Jenny Doan at Missouri Star Quilt Company. Um, go to her YouTube channel, Jenny Doan at Missouri Star Quilt Company, and you'll search uh, Tumbling Charms, and you will find a very quick and very easy um, a tutorial. I don't think she chain pieces like I do, but that saves me a lot of cutting, uh, a lot of individual piece cutting, and, uh, and a lot of time. So 
I like that chain piecing method myself, but um, I ended up with that pretty green quilt that you just saw on the quilt rack. So um, as you can see, I've been uh, keeping a little bit busy in the studio. I now have um, two or three of my own quilts and my daughter's quilts that I need to load on the rack for coming up this week to do in the studio time. I have the week off of any kind of job except quilting. So I'm gonna be working hard to long arm. I, I probably have two small quilts and two medium to large size quilts that I'll be putting on the long armor. So that's what I do throughout my day in the studio when there's no deadlines and when there's no customer uh, pressure waiting to uh, keep me, keep me, my nose to the grindstone. Um, I, I don't necessarily, um, have a practice of tidying up. I try, I, I oil my machines before each new large project. I um, clean my bobbin case and my um, my scraps and uh, uh, pieces off uh, around my sewing area in between each project. And I oil my long arm machine in between each large quilt. So um, I just sort of have a, a rotation. And so um, what are you working on today? If you wanna leave me a little comment, um, if you liked this channel, Channel, please subscribe. If you liked what you saw today, please uh, click thumbs up, like down below. And in the comment section, tell me what you're working on. What are you doing in your studio, your sewing room, at your kitchen table, or your dining room table, or at your office table, or on your sofa? What are you working on? Knitting? Crocheting? Um, are you hand piecing? Are you doing English paper piecing projects, perhaps? Hexies, maybe? Um, I am getting ready to start the next actual sewing project I will be doing is my Liberty project that we had talked about. And I may even do a tumbling charm with my Liberty fabric. I'm thinking about it. Um, so that's uh, what we will probably be up to next in our next vlog. In the meantime, have a really good week. Everybody stay safe. Everybody stay well. And um, spring is coming, so I hope you're getting enjoying some sunshine and getting outside a little bit. Uh, even if it's chilly where you are, we're, gonna, we're expecting some rain tomorrow. So um, hopefully everybody's doing well. I I appreciate you watching so much. Thank you for tuning in and joining me for this vlog at Drama Queen Bee Quilt Studios. This is Beth Maitland. Take good care.